Well, hello out there, and welcome again to another edition of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. I'm Tom. I'm here with my lovely wife, Michelle. Hello, darling. It's so good to have you join us again for another week. If you didn't listen to last week's episode, you really need to go back and do it. We had a great interview with former Disneyland VIP hostess, Nicole. She was fantastic. We talked for 40 minutes. We could have talked for hours more. As a matter of fact, when we turned the mics off, we did sit there and talk for a good another hour with her. And she was great. And we've gotten some really good feedback. So we've already connected with Nicole and plan to have her again in the future as one of our guests to uh, share some more wonderful stories. Absolutely. Yeah. She's agreed that she may come on with us again. We can only hope and uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. But we do suggest go back, listen to this ep- that episode, come back, listen to this episode and listen to all of our episodes. By the way, you can find us on SoundCloud, Stitcher, our website, which is HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And also we're on iTunes and Google Play where you can subscribe to us and you don't even need to try and find our episodes. We'll come right to your phone or device whenever we have a new episode. So normally they come out on Sundays, but we may shift it here and there. You want to know when we have a new episode. And we have some other guests we're hoping to line up in the future as well. And, of course, we're always here to talk Disney about the parks, about Run Disney, Disney uh, Cruise Line, the Disney Vacation Club. We're here to talk Disney because that's what we love to do. Right. It's uh, certainly our passion. And uh, in talking to a lot of people out there and connecting on social media, uh, we're not the only ones, honey. There are a lot of people out there who are just real Disney enthusiasts. So it's a lot of fun um, having this opportunity to share some of our thoughts and to then share some thoughts we get from others, too. By the way, if you'd like to contact us for any we like to be an interactive show. We really want to be. Uh, you can give us questions, comments, tips. If you just want to say hi, if you want to tell us what you think about the show, you can find us on social media, on Twitter, at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook and Instagram, at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. Our website, as I already said, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And you can email us at HyperionAdventuresPodcast at gmail.com. We'd really love to hear from you all. And uh, tell us what you think about the show. And uh, we would, if you have any tips, if you have any questions, uh, we'd love to discuss them with you and possibly share them on the air with uh, some of the great listeners out there. So we've been teasing this during the week. I don't know if you have seen us on social media. You know, I've shot a little video because I was going to go see a screening of Ant-Man and the Wasp. But unfortunately, Michelle was not able to join me for this one because of something that uh, we will discuss here in just a little bit later in the show. But I'm here, as I teased all week, to give you the spoiler-free, I promise, it's a spoiler-free review of, review of Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is coming out this, fr- cur- this Friday, July 6th. So... I know you're excited. I am. I can't wait. I know we have our tickets, and I am super excited. I adored the first one, and uh, can't wait to see the next part of that adventure. So I, this isn't a spoiler. It starts out, it's kind of teased in, uh, if you've seen Infinity War, if you haven't seen Infinity War, you're one of the few that haven't. The movie made over $2 billion, so lots of people have seen it. But if you haven't seen it, you probably should see it before you go into this movie, because there are some things that tie in. I'll get to more about that in the future here. Uh, but anyway, it starts out where Scott Lang, who is a.k.a. Ant-Man, played by Paul Rudd, who doesn't like Paul Rudd, uh, it shows where he was during Infinity War, uh, or just prior to, which is he's under house arrest for what he did uh, during Captain America Civil War, which is another movie you probably want to take a peek at. If you haven't seen it yet, you probably want to take a peek at that movie coming into this one because there's just a few things that tie in. And you also want to see the original Ant-Man. If you haven't seen the original Ant-Man, it's a very cute movie. Uh, it's very funny. It's a little light for many uh, Marvel movies. Uh, you should go check it out and then go see this movie. But So we see where he was, what he was up to. He was under house arrest for those things. And he's there with his daughter. And let me tell you, this movie is all about family. It is funny. It's about family. It's about mothers. I mean, excuse me, fathers and daughters. Hank Pym, uh, who is played by Michael Douglas, 
Uh, Hope Van Dyne, who's played by Evangeline Lilly, they also play a big part in this, just like they did in the original Ant-Man. And Evangeline Lilly, who plays the Wasp, makes she is great in this movie. She is adding to that growing number of women in the Marvel Universe who are out there just kicking butt, and she does a great job in this movie. It's funny, like I said before. It's heartfelt family uh, if you liked Michael Pena, who played Luis in the beginning, I know that was one of your favorite yeah, parts of the original Ant Man. He has another one of those great scenes. If you know the scenes that he were, was best at in the original Ant Man, he has at least one more of those scenes and a several other key scenes in the movie. He's great. Um, I could listen to him tell stories all day long. Just well, the, the way he does it. And the way they act hysterical. them out with the actual actors, you know, the people that he's talked to or whatever, portraying those, you know, in and voicing voice. them in, in, in his words is just hilarious. There's a lot more action in this uh, episode than there was in the original one because the other one was kind of an origin story. So it's kind of trying to figure out how Scott Lang became Ant-Man, how this, you know, learning the suit and everything. So, you know, there were a lot of fun stuff about that. This kind of gets more into it. You already know all that stuff. You should know who all these characters are. So they kind of hit the ground running and go into this thing. But it is really an enjoyable movie. If you saw Infinity War, you know that it kind of finished out in a little bit of a shocking moment. Uh, I'm not going to give it away if you haven't seen it, but it was a little bit of a shocking moment at the end. I think that they decided with this one, look, that was pretty stunning. Let's go light on this one. It's a very light movie. It's not. It does tie into Infinity War, and it does tie into the yet unnamed Avengers 4, but probably not as much as you would, at least not as obvious as you would think it would going in, but there definitely are ties into that. So something to build on as we get ready for another big year of Marvel coming up next year. Uh, there are two post credit scenes that are very important. Stick around to the end of the movie. You'll want to see them. Bottom line, I really loved it. I thought it was a great movie. It was fun and a lot of action. It was, it was what you want from a Marvel movie. I give it four out of five stars. That's, you know, it's really great to see that the Walt Disney Company is embracing, you know, the family and how important and strong families can be and that there's so many variations to what defines a family. And yet, no matter whether you're talking in Pixar with the new Incredibles 2 and how there's kind of that role reversal with the dad and the mom, you know, and now, you know, with with Ant-Man, which there's different types of families. There's the relationship, you know, of dad with his daughter and then with uh, father and daughter mm -hmm. you know so i mean it's really wonderful to you know have powerful women you know yes. but really you know interesting characters but embracing that family and how family comes together and how family supports each other so it's really great to see the the walt disney company you know really building on that even whether it's in the Marvel Universe or the Pixar Universe or wherever. Another strong character that is in this movie is Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, who plays Hank Pym's wife and uh, Evangeline Lilly, uh, Hope Van Dyne's mother in this. She shows up and it has a really strong part in it as well. Um, mm, it, 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 it's, it's an enjoyable movie. And uh, if you go see it this week, we'd love to hear from you what you thought of it. Um, one thing you were talking about, how uh, the different realms of marvel i i find it so interesting that when you go into a marvel movie you know no uh, the, none of the movies seem alike they seem in like they, they can tie together but they seem like they're in their own worlds you know thor doesn't look like doesn't look like captain america which doesn't look like guardians of the galaxy which doesn't look like spider-man which doesn't look like ant-man they're right. kind of in their own little areas yet when they come together they can mesh together so well so a lot of fun and uh, I hope you enjoy it, and we'd love to hear from you if you've gone and seen this movie. So now, on to the reason why Michelle, unfortunately, could not see this movie with me when I went and saw the early screening. We are going to, don't worry, I'm not keeping her away from this movie. We're going to see it Friday. I'm looking forward to seeing it again. So, Michelle, what were you doing that kept you away from this screening? Well, I was fortunate enough to be able to take a small trip out to the East Coast and visit Walt Disney World. Um, I did this. Oh, darn. I know. You're I know. really suffering it there. Was, Are you missing was. the movie? <laughs> um, but I did get to bring my mother, my elderly mother there. She's a I wouldn't call her frail, but you know, it's a it's a different experience when you bring around somebody. She's who... ninety one. <laughs> yeah. So no, she's actually a very strong ninety one. She is. She is. But you know, she is ninety one. But and so, um, but you know, so we sorry got... to give your age out. I there, know. Mom. I so. know. Right. 
uh, we'll probably hear from her. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it was, you know, really great. It was a short couple days there. Um, had some really wonderful times, some, some Disney firsts that I got to really? experience. Yes. So one of them that I wanted to share was I did get to see the rope drop. Um, part of the reason why I was able to make that was because I took a red eye out there. I'm not recommending that's the way to go see a rope drop, but if you do take a red <laughs> that's eye. Our, that's our problem. Whenever we go out there to Walt Disney World, it's because we're West Coast that, you know, 7, 8 a.m. for everybody on the East Coast is 4, 5 a.m. Yeah. for us. So it's a little tough for us to sometimes get out there to the parks early. So we haven't. We've, as much as we've tried, sometimes we haven't quite made the rope drop, so I'm glad you got to see it finally. Yeah, it was wonderful, and uh, I will be posting a little bit of a video on our Facebook page on that. But nice. anyways, yeah, um, so what I would recommend anybody wants to see it, it's really great, especially for people bringing kids. Um, it's adorable. And you don't have to be there super long in line. I was there very long in line beforehand. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, the official, I guess, where they drop the rope, if you want to say that they let you into the park. As long as you're, as long as you're there um, 10 to 15 minutes, I would say 15 minutes um, be- before the park actually opens, then you'll be okay, you know, and just go straight straight down Main Street, get near the castle. You don't have to be up against the castle. I was, but you <laughs> didn't have to be because it's the stage on the castle where, where all the excitement um, is really held. But it's just an awesome way to start your day at Walt Disney World. And it, you know, the, the kid in me got a little bit choked up, you know, mm. even now talking about it. But, you know, the characters give you such a warm welcome to start your day. It's like when you see this and you realize you're at Walt Disney World, it's like, wow, yeah. the fun is about to begin. So um, I would definitely recommend that. And it was fun seeing the incredible touches at the Magic Kingdom that, you know, kind of th- kicks into the theme of Pixar Fest. Um, they had some specialty foods that were not the same as Disneyland. Oh, really? The little bit that I, I've heard from you, uh, mm-hmm. I hope to hear some more, but um, they did have some nice touches like in Tomorrowland. When you first walk in, you you do kind of feel immersed. They have a lot of, you know, signage and, and decor that are go, goes along with um, Incredibles 2. Okay. And then they had some uh, food that was, like I said, a little different. They had Mrs. Incredible Pretzel Masks in Tomorrowland at <laughs> the launch girl. pad. Yeah. <laughs> right. Pretzel masks. Right. Well, and if you I like, love the soft pretzels enough. Wow. I know. I know. And these are cute. But what's really cute is doing people watching there and seeing how many people are taking pictures holding up their <laughs> their. Uh, it's a mask. You, know, you got to try it on. And this is incredible mask. So that. And tell me you haven't taken the Mickey pretzel and held it up like you know right? the Mickey. Exactly. At some point, you know, I mean, everybody's exactly. done that too. So that's that was fun, and uh, you know, at um, they also have at the Cosmic Rays Starlight Cafe. I don't know why I struggle with that one, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. anyways, they have some, and I'm holding my fingers up. Quote superfood there, <laughs> and one of them is a superfood salad. That's right. Wow. Superfood salad that joking. has. It, you're, you're right. Good guess. It had kale and avocado and blueberries, balsamic vinegar dressing. So I'm not sure. Oh, those are all superfoods. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure if that's enough to get your kid to eat that by calling it superfood. But, you know, it does. It definitely Do whatever is. you can to get your kids to eat healthy. I'm it's telling you. It's a nice you. try. But for the adults, it's a fun food to try there, too. So, um, you know, that that was really fun to do. Um, we got to see the fireworks. Um, oh. I took my mom to the fireworks. Uh, there was actually in the distance multiple lightning storms going on. So there was a lot of extra pizzazz in the sky that day. It happens a lot in Walt Disney World. Right. If you haven't been there, uh, a lot of times there is a light show going on outside of the park. Some, it can be a little, sometimes it can be a little scary, but usually it's, it's just more fun. It's kind of right. off in the distance and fun. And so we uh, were at the top of the world at Bay Lake Tower, which if you're a um, Disney Vacation Club member, that's a wonderful perk that you get to go up there and and watch them from there. Mm. So I did learn a little something from there. They they have gogi wine there, mm-hmm. which is one, one of, of the, our favorites. Right, one of our favorite from Kurt Russell, which is one of the um, few Disney family wines that are at Disney World. Um and I know we thought Gogi was named 
after Goldie, but it isn't. That was Kurt Russell's nickname as a kid. Seems like he said that at some point, but I just just wanted to make <laughs> right? it be about Goldie. You know? Right, and I guess the grandkids call him that too. So, And then the other interesting thing that I'll talk a little bit more in my tip section uh, is something that was a new experience for me. So all in all, it was a great trip. It was really, really short. It was like a day and a half out there, but had a wonderful time and got to see a lot of new things. And it's always fun to go to these parks and see something different. Uh, It's fun to have some of the traditional things, but having some new experiences makes it a much more enjoyable trip. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, you know, you were sad about this, uh, that unfortunately because the trip was a short one, you weren't able to be there for the opening of the new Toy Story Land, I which know. I know you were kicking yeah. yourself over on this trip that right. uh, wish you had been able to stick around for an extra day or two uh, to be able to check it out. But uh, we did see a lot of great posts out there. Go, go look at them yourself. The place looks fantastic. Right. And uh, we're excited to try that out sometime in the near future as well. So exactly. while you were away at Walt Disney World. Yes. I decided, look, I got to get my own Pixar fun going on. So of course. yesterday, as before you flew back or as you were flying back, I decided to go out and for this podcast, I was doing this for the podcast, oh, not sure. for myself. <laughs> this is, uh, believe me, I had no fun. I was, this was work. This was work yes, for me. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Do you buy that? <laughs> no. I went out and explored Pixar Pier for the first time out at uh, Disney's California Adventure at the Disneyland Resort. And, uh, Really had a great day out there, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I got there really early. I drove up, and Michelle wasn't around, so I I could get up early and get moving and got out the door and got there at rope drop time. Uh, And what they do, just to explain to you, and this is really... If you want to do this while it's the summer and it's really busy, uh, we benefited that I benefited. This was a Saturday, so a lot. The Saturday during the summer, a lot of the annual passes are blacked out, so it's kind of a better day if you're going to pick a weekend day to go. It's kind of a better day to go out there if you want to visit the park on a Saturday or, excuse me, on a weekend. So I went out there, got the rope drop. What they do when you walk in for Pixar Pier now is they'll direct you off. As if you know California Adventure at all, uh, there's the branch off to the right where there's a Soarin' and Grizzly River uh, run and everything. They'll direct you, if you want to go there, that direction. So you go out there and you line up outside of Pixar Pier. On the left side, anyone who wants to go on the Incredicoaster first goes to the left. Anybody who wants to get fast passes or do anything else there will go to the right side. And they'll escort you in. At least this is what they did for us. Uh, A couple minutes before actual rope drop, they will escort you in there so you can get right into the ride. So I was right in the Incredicoaster. I was on in five minutes. Wow. Uh, It was great. Uh, Went on. Uh, it's if, if you know California Screaming, if you like California Screaming, you'll like this ride. It's got some great new theming with the Incredibles on it. I won't give it all away. Uh, just to say that it's about Jack-Jack and them trying to get Jack-Jack. And there's a lot of fun out there. Edna makes an appearance. Edna Mode. Uh, of course, all the, the Parr family, Violet, Dash, uh, Elastigirl, and Mr. Incredible. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a great coaster. I really enjoyed it. So after that, what I did is I went and got immediately a fast pass for Midway Mania. Nice. And then I went over to the new, well, it's the same old, kind of. It's the Mickey wheel, but now it's called the Pixar Pal Around. Uh, all the cars now, all the gondolas on there have different Pixar characters on them. I got, funny, I got a picture with Elastigirl, and I got a gondola with Elastigirl on it. Wow. Uh, and went on that. I was on that in five minutes. So, because everybody was going to the Incredicoaster right. or to Midway Mania. So, I got off of that. Then I was able to go and just to kind of explore. I checked out the Boardwalk games, which are now rethemed for Pixar, and they're great. There's Heimlich's Candy Corn Toss, the La Luna Star Catcher, which is based off the great short, uh, Pixar short La Luna, which is one of my favorites. Uh, the Wally Space Race was great. Uh, Bullseye's uh, Stallion Stampede. It's like kind of that horse racing game. Uh, it's mostly the same games that you've played there, but they're themed nicely. They have great uh, Pixar uh, plush giveaways. Really a lot of fun. So I got that. And then I went over and I checked out. If you go in, as you're walking in, you may be running in to try and get to some of these rides. But go back and check out the billboards that are on the way, kind of the, the, the boardwalk leading into 
the Incredicoaster and everything uh, past the Lamplighter Lounge and such. They have the cutest billboards. Uh, there's a great one with Wally and Eve. There's one from Up. There's one from Finding Dory. There's one from Coco. And they're just fantastic little billboards. And they really welcome you into the place and are, are really exciting. Uh, so go check those out. If you want to see them, I was on Twitter all day yesterday posting pictures of this stuff. Find us on our Twitter at Hyperion Podcast. You can check them out also on Instagram at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. I've got pictures up for you. So did that, then did Midway Mania. So within the first just over an hour, I had already knocked out the main three rides that exist at Pixar Pier and could go and just wow. check out everything else out, check out the food, uh, which I'll talk about here in just a second. And this great theming. Another part of the great theming is uh, that I really enjoyed was even the umbrellas out there. They look like they have the Luxo ball, uh, you know, oh, with this wow. red star and the yellow and the blue, uh, the, all the umbrellas. And it just, what these little touches, idea. these little touches are so great. If you go and you walk in just past the Pixar Pier sign as you're walking over by the Lamp Player Lounge, look up at the awning because the awning is amazing. They have Pixar characters, even some of the more obscure Pixar characters are throughout this. You could sit there and just stare at this awning. All day long and just be picking out characters that you don't you wow. didn't see the first time you look at it. I really nice. suggest take a look at the theming. Uh, Knickknacks is great. It's got the little snowman in the uh, the snow globe up there on top. That's the <laughs> that's the uh, merchandise store as you're walking in. Uh, the Lamplighter Lounge. I'm going to start my food segment with the Lamplighter Lounge with Excellent. something you need to do is that unfortunately I didn't get to try it this time, but it looks great. The theming's great. There's more outdoor seating than there used to be. You can now get a reservation in this place and do so. Get a reservation. You can just walk right in. That's the easiest no way to get in, in there. You, well, I'm sure there'll be a little wait, but you don't have to stand in line. However, if you don't have a reservation, there are still options to get into this place on a standby basis. There are lines. There is one line that goes off to the, if you're facing it, it goes off to the left. That is for the upstairs area, you know, which was always the Cove Bar. Uh, for their small plates and their cocktails. And then the other line, uh, which will tend to be a little bit smaller line, is for downstairs, inside, indoor, or outdoor. And they have a more of a full menu and uh, everything else involved there. So you have your options there, but uh, I would suggest going to the Lamplighter Lounge. They also have a, it's not so secret, it's out there pretty much everywhere you've seen it now. There's a special kind of room off to the side that is called the office. Now, from what I understand about this is that it is available for anybody. So if no, if no one's in there at that time, if I mean, I'm sure there may be some VIPs or celebrities or whatever that can reserve it ahead of time. But if no one's in there, you can ask and see if this room's available. And it's on a first-come, first-served basis. So if you happen to be the lucky one, you can get in this private little room, which go find the pictures online. It's really a phenomenal room. It's got its own little private outdoor area to go sit outside and kind of look at uh, at some of the stuff that's going on uh, in and around Pixar Pier. But from what I understand, you can possibly get it, but it'll probably fill up quickly. But they also, it also has an interesting way to get in. It looks like it's like a little vault code that you have to kind of program <laughs> in to get into this room. So kind of fun. But uh, anyway, uh, that was fun. The food that I tried out when I was there, here are the food places that are there. There's Poultry Palace, Senior Buzz's Churros, uh, of course, uh, Adorable Snowman's Frozen Treats, and angry, uh, angry, and angry dogs, excuse me. And what I tried out was the Poultry Palace uh, first. I got their three drumstick box, which is really cute. It comes in this cute box that looks exactly like the stand looks like Poultry Palace and the box looks like the stand. Um, and it comes with three nice size chicken drumsticks and some coleslaw uh, for just a little over 10 bucks. Uh, what I would say about the chicken is it's cooked really well it's seasoned nicely it tastes good it's good. it's moist it's juicy it's the three drumsticks well, that i got anyway were hearty they were easily a good meal uh the only thing i didn't wasn't crazy about is because it's kind of like it looks like it should be like a fried chicken thing it's kind of the crust is kind of a seasoned breadcrumb and not like panko it's kind of more like the little small right. you know crushed up breadcrumb and there was a little texture thing for me personally just because when i give if i get a fried chicken i kind of like that crunch right, you know and right. But the taste was good. I enjoyed it. It comes also with uh, a side of coleslaw, which depends how you like your coleslaw. If you like vinegary, kind of soury but sweet coleslaw, 
it's a good coleslaw nice. for you. If you like it more creamy, a little more on the sweet side, then you probably won't like this as much. But I enjoyed it. Uh, the other thing that they had there is uh, the other thing I tried later on in the day was I went out and I tried an angry dog. Well, I wanted to try an angry dog. I got there <laughs> up to the front and I went up there and it's like, yes, one angry dog, please, which is a spicy hot dog. I want an angry dog. And they're like, well, this is kind of ironic. We're out of angry dogs. And, you know, it might make you a little angry. And I'm like, oh. All right. Well, I am not angry, but I am slightly annoyed. So can I have the slightly annoyed dog, which is a little less spicy hot dog that they have there? Uh, and it was pretty good. I mean, it's a hot dog. Good it's got story. a little. It's got a little seasoning to it. Well, a good thing about it is if you go to the side of it, they have where they have the condiments. They have all sorts of different. And I'm sorry, I meant to. Um, I'll post the picture online. I meant to note what they were, but they have various different condiments there, and they. They give them funny little names going on with anger and such, but they have a regular ketchup. They have a regular yellow mustard. They have a spicy brown mustard. They have a sriracha ketchup, which was which I had because it's like my dog wasn't as spicy, which was really good. And they have uh, some buffalo sauce there. So if you if you're if you're angry dog or you're you know not so angry dog uh, is a, not quite up to the spice you want, you can boost that up but that's uh, nice having all those different toppings yeah. I, I enjoyed the dog it was good it was a hot dog it wasn't like you know it's not out of this world i'm not gonna try and oversell it but it was good the rest of the food i didn't try a lot of the other food but i saw lots of people enjoying it it looked good um it was a lot of fun and i suggest you get out there right not open yet but expected to open soon is bing bong sweet stuff i got to see some of that the outer part of it uh, it looks like it's going to be really cool once that opens up, still also yet to open, which are going to be opening in 2019, are Jesse's Quitter Carousel. It's going to be the same place that the old carousel was there, uh, but apparently it's going to have like some of her little critter friends instead of the, you know, I think it was a, a Little Mermaid theme before. Right, so right. it some, had sort of like some, some seahorses sea. and such like that. Now it's going to be Jesse's Critter. And also announced, uh, I believe it was just this last week, uh, is the Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind, which is going to open up kind of on the far side of the Incredicoaster as you're going out towards Paradise Gardens and around there. And that what that looks like from the drawings that they posted online is it looks like what they're going to do is take, and I, I know some people that are sad about this, is that you know, we, if you haven't heard, they're going to be closing Bugs Land uh, somewhere near the end of this summer to open up a new Marvel-themed area in that spot. And I know a lot of families that have really young kids. It's kind of the one place in California Adventure where young kids could go and ride rides and have fun and everything. So uh, they may be a little disappointed at that. But what it looks like is they're going to take Flix Flyers, which is uh, kind of a little thing that spins around you have a little card in it it kind of flies around uh it looks like they're going to move that over into uh pixar pier give it a new surface recolors and everything and they're going to make it into the inside out emotional whirlwind that's what it looks like anyways it looks very similar i can't tell until they actually do it but at least it seems like they're repurposing that ride and it'll give another ride for for young children to go on which would be nice right that's a nice option to have because there are a lot of things that really little kids or toddlers might not be able to enjoy as much in pixar pier so that's wonderful that they're yeah you know certainly you know catering to that that need as well exactly exactly uh one thing i also got to experience was out there and i don't know if you've seen it yet but what released released this week was the by the way if you hear a little noise in the background that's my son michelle's son scott he's off uh, he likes christmas music he's listening to christmas music right now and having a good old time reading a magazine listening to christmas music so we hear a couple of noises in the background that's just him he's having a good time anyway um to release just this week was the play disney app it finally came out it's been announced a couple weeks ago it finally came out and we i know i got to use it did you get to I use it at walt disney use world it at walt disney world on the day it released and uh i tried hand it some trivia yeah me too Found how'd you do uh, uh, it's too embarrassing really yeah of course okay i i was just off a of red eye so. yeah yeah excuses <laughs> okay. excuses uh 50%. i like to say i did great but i didn't like i i did some of the buena vista street um and I did okay, but I would have liked to have done better. I did Cars Land and nailed it 10 for 10. I was great. Nice. Cars Land, no problem. But uh, a little struggle. But that was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, they're, they're, it also does some other things. It, it, when you're in line at different rides, there are some games you can play while you're in line. Like I said, there's the trivia you can also play when you're in line. Give some way to amuse yourself. Uh, if you have your location settings on and your Bluetooth on, on certain rides, it'll give you achievements when you finish those rides. But I will 
warn everybody out there. I had this app on and I did it with the location services on and in the Bluetooth on. And I looked down at my phone at about 11 a.m. and my battery was down to 20%. So it will zap your battery, at least as it is right now. Hopefully they'll some call find some way to solve that issue. But if you're looking to have a big day, you know, you're not going to get back to be able to charge it, your phone anytime soon. You want to take a lunch, fit, bunch of pictures with your family. You may want to lay off that app a little bit or at least bring something with you that you can conveniently charge your phone throughout the day. Right. I had that same experience. Um, it, it was neat, you know, walking through mm-hmm. and it was announcing as you were getting close to an attraction that if you were going into that attraction, you could get your achievement rewards. But again, I also had um, the battery consumption issues that you did. Yeah. Um, so. And I don't know. Fun, but- I don't know what would have happened if I, had, you know, kept the location services off and kept the Bluetooth off. If it would have been just fine. Uh, just playing the games. By the way, you can just sit at home and play the trivia. You don't need to be in the park to play the trivia. You can do it sitting at right. home, just lounging around, wasting time at work. What, what, who would do that? <laughs> but yeah, you can you can still have fun with that app, and you don't have to have it in the parks. But it is a great addition to the parks. So that was my day at Pixar Pier. Onward nice. to this week's other Disney stories. As we always do, we try and cover some of the week's key stories. And I'm going to start right off with... Disney, the company, and big move they made last week and what other news that happened this week. Disney, we told you a couple weeks ago and a couple episodes ago of the podcast that Comcast bid $65 billion, outbidding Disney for 21st Century Fox. Well, last week, Disney came back, upped their bid to Comcast to $71.3 billion. Uh so they have upped that deal. It looks like it's more of a possibility Disney might acquire them. What also may clear a big hurdle for Disney acquiring 21st Century Fox is that the Department of Justice this week gave the deal its antitrust approval, provided that Disney would get rid of Fox's 22 regional sports networks. That way they're not ESPN and all the Fox Sports West, Fox Sports One, Fox Sports, you know, wow. that, yeah. otherwise, because that's where it might be an antitrust uh, problem. So, as long as they got rid of that, they said no antitrust problems, we'll let it go through. So, uh, it looks like 21st Century Fox, uh, their st- shareholders will vote on this. I believe it's July 27th. So, later this month, happy July 1st, everyone. Later this month, uh, we should find out whether or not Disney will own the likes of the X-Men and Homer Simpson and uh, Deadpool and some of the other major characters out there in the 21st century Fox world. Well, that's exciting news and uh, fingers are crossed here so that can go through. And I know Disney thinks it's very important because they're trying to release this new platform coming out here in the next couple of years, a new video streaming platform that they want to kind of take on Netflix and some of these other companies that do that. And they really feel like, yes, they have, you know, they have so many great products between Marvel and Star Wars and Pixar and, of course, Disney. But adding all these elements from 21st Century Fox as well would help buoy that platform. So... Big news. We'll see how it goes the rest of this month. Onward to my next story. Unfortunately, while Disney seems to be growing, they're also shrinking a little bit. It appears that Disney will be closing their Disney Toon Animation Studios. Uh, Yeah, created in 1988. They're most famous for doing kind of direct-to-video movies, Mulan 2, uh, The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning, the, the, you know, the Tinkerbell movies, which are kind of cute, but not really theatrical type movies, but a lot of kids love them. Uh, they also did have a couple theatrical releases, which like uh, the last one was Planes, Fire and Rescue in 2014. And we saw a thing that they were doing at uh, D23 last year, which was kind of an, an, a new thing on the Planes thing. They had this great video of these um, of these fighter jets and we just saw a clip of this going through the over the desert and everything and it was really a stunning uh video so i don't know what's going to come of that and where that's going to go but unfortunately it looks like uh those studios are going to be closed and unfortunately it looks like that might result in the loss of 75 staff positions so hopefully those people can all land on their feet find another space within uh the disney company or some of the other great uh companies that are doing animation out there Right. Wow, that's interesting news I hadn't heard of. And, uh, you know, some really 
uh, amazing kind of things that have come out of there. But I'm sure they're going to, you know, continue that process mm-hmm. with their other facilities. Sure, sure. And maybe the, just a kind of way of just tightening it in, uh, you know, uh, bringing it into one roof as opposed to all these different places. Right. So. Uh, another thing I want to bring out there, and this has to do with the parks, but not the parks here in the U.S. or even in Europe. This has to do with Hong Kong Disneyland Resort and Shanghai Disney Resort. If you love to race, run Disney races like we do. Well, these aren't run Disney races, but there are going to be some races coming up here at both Hong Kong and in Shanghai. Oh. Hong Kong is going to do another. They've done this before. They're doing another 10K race weekend. It's going to be November 3rd and 4th. Registration is now open. If you want to do it, you can go to their website and find the registration. The races are going to be themed on The Incredibles, Monsters University, Toy Story, and Mickey and Friends. They're going to be a 10K, a 5K, a 3K, and some kid races. So if you wanted to go check out the Asian parks, which we want to do at some point, I don't think we're going to make it out this fall. But we really, that's on our our list of things to do is go check out some of the uh, Disneyland Asia theme parks. Uh, There's one. Shanghai is going to be holding its first ever, what they are going to call the Disney Inspiration Run, and that is going to be on September 15th and 16th. Uh, They will be doing a 10K, a 5K, and a 3.5K. There are three specially designed courses that wind through the iconic features, including Enchanted Story uh, Book Castle, the new Disney Pixar Toy Story Land, which I don't know if you heard, but they also have a Toy Story Land out there, and they finish alongside the picturesque Wishing Star Lake. Registration is not up yet, but they do have a spot on their website. Uh, They'll tell you when it's coming up. So if you want to do some racing and you wanted to get out to the Disney parks in and around Asia, there might be a chance to tie them both together. Wow, that sounds exciting. I had a good friend of mine who just came back from Hong Kong and uh, visited the park and just loved it. I mean, the the high tech of all their attractions was a, a really bonus that, that she experienced over there. And um, what we've experienced with the 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 smaller runs, like the 5Ks, is uh, the amount of time that you get to actually spend in the parks mm-hmm. is really phenomenal, and it really makes the race that much more enjoyable. Not that the other ones are not right. uh, equally fun, but that's something that makes the smaller runs a little bit more unique, is that the amount of time that you're actually in and about the parks is, is pretty cool. Yeah, I find that with a 5K, and it's also, it's a, it's a lot less threatening. It's only, it's it's 3.1 miles, so it's not that far of a distance, and and you can walk it, you know, a brisk walk, but you can walk it, you can run it, you can jog a little bit, uh, but you really get in the parks. I find the 10K races of high value because you get a good distance on your race. They're mostly spent in the parks. The half marathons, uh, you know, it's really strenuous and it's tough. And you do have, you know, sometimes you'll get to even visit three parks, but there is a lot of time out of the park. Those two races, the 5K and the 10K, are really the best ones if you just want to enjoy the parks themselves on these runs or walks or whatever, you, however you want to approach it. Uh, those are really good races and they are fairly non-threatening. Right. And you get to experience more of the cast members that are there cheering mm-hmm. you on. Um, so that's also a nice little feature. But Disney always does a great job, even on the half marathons, of theming out throughout it when there could be right. some stretches of areas where maybe it's not exactly the most. I mean, you know, Disney World is pretty picturesque, but there could be some boring spots throughout it. But they tend to put out some music or some video screens and some characters here and there. Stuff to kind of get you through it as you go on this Really long trip, right. <laughs> really long run. <laughs> um, one last note, one last news note before we get to our tips. Uh, it looks like now that Disney Cruise Line is going to be upgrading the Port Canaveral terminals. As you may or may not know, there are going to be three new ships coming to Disney Cruise Line. 2021, 2022, and 2023 are when they're scheduled to be released. They're saying they think at least one of those ships is going to be permanently at Port Canaveral. And as we know now, that place can get a little bit crowded. If you're going to add one more permanent ship there, it can be a little tough. So they're looking to possibly upgrade Terminal 8, and they may be also doing something with Terminal 10. They went and uh, talked to the port commissioners. They unanimously approved uh, for them to move forward on this with a study to check out the viability of this. So it may be now. We already know if you've been on Disney Cruise Line out of Port Canaveral, you already know what the one terminal, Terminal 8, that they use regularly is like. Well, they may eventually 
also add Terminal 10 as one of their key terminals to get these ships out of. That's great. And it is, it does get to be busy at times. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they do a wonderful job managing crowds um, in taking various Disney cruises from different locations. There's nothing like that home port of Port Canaveral. I mean, you are totally immersed in Disney. The other ports, they do a wonderful job of, you know, theming as well, but it, it, it doesn't really have that same experience of going into the home port of Disney Cruise Line. And they have done some upgrades uh, recently to Terminal 8, but I think we would both admit that, you know, the, the Terminal 8 was kind of built for when they had the smaller ships like the Magic and the Wonder. Now that they have the Dream and the Fantasy, which are these bigger ships, right. and the three new ships are coming are going to be about that size, maybe even a little bit bigger. Uh, so they really need to uh, kind of expand these and make them more uh, workable for a lot of these families. Again, when, when, when you're boarding the Fantasy or the Dream, it can be a little crowded in there. Right. It's a great terminal, but it could be a little crowded. So that's the stories, the Disney stories of the week. And now as we finish up this week's episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast, we do it always with tips. And as always, Michelle leads off our tips of the week. All right. Well, thank you. So the tip I'm going to f- tell you about, I first want to share an experience that I had this hmm. this past week at Disney World. So we were leaving Epcot to go back to our resort and waiting at the, the bus area. And um, there was one of a, a cast member who came by. They're not always standing there, but he came by and was talking to the crowd. It, it was quite a rainy day um, and just being full of joy he was really funny to be there and he offered to do a trivia contest with anybody who wanted to participate there he said he just had one question and that it it would result in a prize so like prizes i know right that's the disney prizes i know well and when he was saying that i mean he's just standing there there's really nothing in his hands or anything so i you know i thought it was going to be something like you know everybody applauding or something like that. But anyway, so here's his question. He said, what beloved Epcot character has his own attraction and makes up many park products, anything from stuffed toys to Disney pins, but is never in a Disney movie? Oh, I think I know this one. I knew it. What did you say? What would you guess? Figment. That's right. So he did have everybody applaud for me, which I thought was nice. <laughs> um, but he gave me as a prize, and I'm just pulling it out, Tom has not seen it yet, this transportation collectible card. Wow. And What's that? What? So it's, this one was, it's a transportation, it's a bus one from Epcot, and they have a little bit of information on the back, little like trivia things, and he said that all forms of transportation at Disney has a card that you can collect. There's 26, I believe he said 26 oh. in all. Um, now, like with him, I, I had to win a trivia contest, and, and it was a surprise. He said not all of the transportation cast members carry the card. So it's only certain ones that do, um, and you might not realize which ones do, so you can ask. Um, but some of them, again, may require you to earn them. He said the other thing is that some of them are a little harder to get. So for the trains at um Disney World to get a transportation card there for the Walt transportation or Walt train, I guess is Mm. what he called it. Um, He he said, you have to do that first thing in the morning when they first open that there's only maybe like one cast member or so who might be carrying cards that could give them out and they don't do it all day. So it's kind of like a scavenger hunt. If you want to get to do it, it's free, but I would say that's another fun thing to do while you're at Disney is as you're, doing whether you're doing boats or or the monorail or the buses the trains that you can try to explore and see if you can get these collectible cards so. very cool that's cool i had no idea that's i know interesting. i didn't know it existed I, it was a fun way to win it and, and now i'm on a new i was quest. gonna say now <laughs> when next time we go to walt disney world i know what we're gonna be doing right? it's been it's been pins it's been all these things Keys now it's gonna be yeah, now, now it's this. gonna be this so <laughs> Yay! Yeah, that will be fun. It's it's always fun when you find new things to do at the parks like that. And the other small tip that kind of links in with this one, I mentioned rain, is, you know, I know in the summertime in Florida, rain is pretty much a staple there. Um, I'm from Florida there, so I I certainly knew that. So, you know, obviously packing ponchos is a great idea. But the other thing is that don't let the rain discourage you from getting involved in things there. Um, 
We actually had uh, one of our days there was pretty unusual that it was thunderstorms all day. Mm. Um, usually in Florida, you have uh, it builds up to one large thunderstorm. It, it's a pour down and then it gets cool the rest of the day and the evening. And so you can kind of sometimes just go back to your resort midday, you know, and then come back in the evening when it's a little cooler. But also for those adventurous ones, if you hang out while it's raining, uh, you get to get into a lot of things without any problems. Right. And, and that was some of the things that we noticed there. Tough it out. I know. So as a Disney Vacation Club member, we obviously went up um, into into the pavilion there. Brighter. I know. <laughs> had a lot of different sodas and a little mixture of this and that. <laughs> you know, my mom had some hot tea to warm her up. And uh, so we hung out there a bit. But we also, you know, even without reservations, um, you could get into some of those restaurants. We stopped at the... Um, Great Britain Pavilion there, and they were going to be able to seat us within 10 minutes without any reservation. So nice. there's, you know, with the rain, don't let it discourage you. Um, you can still participate in some things. Or if you're out there and it is something that makes it uncomfortable, if you have a lot of kids and they're getting a little cranky with the rain and being wet, then go back to your resort, get dried up, warmed up, and come back in the evening when it's, you know, cooler and clear skies. Perfect. That's a, that's a great tip. That's Thanks. a great tip. So my tip for this week is going to be, we're heading into the summer. It's the busy season. At, well, it's always the busy season at the parks, but especially the summer and some of the, uh, the regular vacations, Christmas break, spring break, whatever. Some of the lines can be crazy at some of these rides at both the Disneyland Resort and Walt Disney World. Uh, but I've got a little trick on how you might be able to avoid some of these. And many of you already know this, but... If you're a family who doesn't, if you have young, very young children that want to ride by your side constantly, just, you know, they're not afraid of this ride or whatever, then this probably won't work for you. But if you have a little bit older children, if you're a family that doesn't mind riding a ride, you don't need to be next to your significant other necessarily, there are things that are called single rider lines. And a lot of some of the key, more popular uh, attractions at both of these parks. And what you can do is sometimes they'll have a line right up there they'll say you know this line is just for single riders sometimes you can go up to a uh, cast member and ask them you know is there a single rider line they will escort you to the area where they'll cue you in for when that and what it sometimes when you do that line it can cut the wait time in half sometimes even more for some of these rides that are an hour hour and a half long so here are the rides that you can do this in. at Walt Disney World, Test Track at Epcot, you can do this. Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith in the Hollywood Studios, it's a single rider line. Expedition, Expedition Everest at Animal Kingdom Park has a single rider line. Those are three of the most wow, popular yes. rides at Walt Disney World, which you might be able to cut your wait time about in half if, you're, if, uh, if it works out for you. Other rides at Disneyland Resort, Indiana Jones Adventure, the Matterhorn Bobbers, Bobber, the Matterhorn, I can say this, the Matterhorn <laughs> Bobsleds, Space Mountain, Splash Mountain, over at California Adventures, Radiator Springs Racers, the Incredicoaster, Ooh. Grizzly River Run, and Goofy Sky School all have some form of single rider line. And again, these are very popular attractions. The lines are often an hour or more to wait for them. This is a way that if you don't mind, you know, sitting next to someone you don't know and your spouse or your child is either three rows in front of you or three rows behind you or whatever, uh, this is a good way to cut your time and, and use your uh, time in the park more efficiently. Wow, that's excellent. That's an excellent tip. And, you know, when you're at these parks, you do want to try to find things to do in between or to try to cut time so you can maximize your experiences mm -hmm. there. So that's an awesome tip. Yeah, yeah. So that's it's a great thing. If you, if, go check it out. Uh, like I said, even if you don't know, if you don't see a sign that says single rider line, ask a cast member. They'll tell you if there is one, if there's not. And if there is, they'll show you where you need to go to get into these rides. So that's it for this week. Thank you again for listening. Next week, I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, I think we're going to, I was thinking we could do this because I don't think that a lot of people, like we're on the West Coast, people go to Disneyland Resort. They don't necessarily know Walt Disney World. People who listen to us on the East Coast, they go to Walt Disney World all the time. They don't necessarily know the Disneyland Resort really well. We're going to discuss the, the differences between the two parks and maybe nice. what you, if you go to the parks uh, on either side of the coast, what maybe you can expect 
what to look for, what the different, what makes these places fun. So I think we're going to go over a lot of that next week. And, of course, we'll hit all the other Disney news that comes up, or at least some of it. There's so much Disney news that breaks every week. We can't right. possibly get it up to it all. Uh, but, of course, if there's something that comes up that you want to talk about, if you want us to bring it up on the show, or if you just want to ask what, give your, give your opinion or ask our opinion on something that comes up during the week, feel free to contact us on our social media. We're at Twitter, at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook and Instagram, at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. We're on the web, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. You can email us, HyperionAdventuresPodcast at gmail.com. We'd always love to hear from you if you want to say hi, if you have questions, if you have your own tip that you want to share, we'll share them with you and give you full credit. Feel free to contact We want this to be an interactive show, so feel free to contact us. As far as listening to this show, obviously you're listening to it now, so you found us some way. But ways you can find us is on our website, like I said, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. We're on SoundCloud. We're on Stitcher. We're also on iTunes and Google Play, where you can subscribe to us and you won't need to search us out. We'll come right to your phone or device whenever we have a new show. So thanks again for listening. We really appreciate you being a part of this show, listening to us every week. And we hope to make you more of a part of it in the future. We hope you have a great and safe 4th of July week. And that's it for us. I'm Tom. I'm Michelle. And we hope you have a magical week.